there's a bunch of different factors that go into that one. It's interactive versus non-interactive, um, and there's two separate licenses that are up on the ASCAP website right now. Um, I can't, I couldn't tell you exactly what the dollar figures are right now, but I know that the webcasters are um, are a little miffed right now that that the CRB came down in favor of of rights holders uh, as far as the royalty rates were concerned, but it was uh, a decision that. It was it was a process that that the webcasters had demanded initially, and the fact that they aren't happy with the results of those deliberations of the CRB um, is not our fault. It's far from our fault, and we shouldn't be blamed for the outcome. Um, but it did uh, the result was in our favor, so uh, we need to now move from there to figure out where our middle ground is going to be. But we can't let um, you know let. It, uh, ordinary Americans be swayed into thinking that we're greedy or um, that we're trying to you know take unfair advantage of any other party if you look at the history of the music business there's I don't think there's one instance that you could point to where you could say man those songwriters really stuck it to fill in the blank I mean it's one t situation after another um, where we have been taken advantage of and, and generally abused and, and left out of the, the money equation um, so as we move into this new digital realm, we need to be sure that um, that the decisions that are being made are being made with our participation, and that we don't wind up in a situation like we've been in for you know the last hundred years or so, with the uh, the models that we've worked under, where the songwriters have have not made the best of it for sure, and the rules that we set now could govern the way we do business for the next century or beyond. We're looking at um, iTunes right now as, as sort of an ideal, and not even an ideal necessarily, but um, every sale uh, that occurs from the iTunes music store, 66% of the revenue that's generated goes back to the rights holders. And I personally think that's fair. If you can sell one of my songs, um, you know, and I give you 34 cents on the dollar, and you sell a gazillion songs, you'll become a very, very wealthy individual. Um, and, you know, with with terrestrial radio, um, we, like I said before, had originally licensed out terrestrial radio at around 5% of their net revenue. <coughs> we currently are in 3.25% of their net revenue, which is, um, is a minuscule amount of money considering the fact that they're earning $21.2 billion per year, uh, basically just flipping on the switch at the radio station and putting on a record and then going out and selling advertising time. So I. I don't know if the word astronomical is necessarily appropriate, but um, it is going to increase their cost of doing business. But for people who aren't good at that business, it's going to drive them out, certainly. Basically, we don't need um, more people blasting our music out to the entire world. I mean, certainly some songwriters um, would appreciate the exposure, and there's no reason at all why those writers can't license directly with uh, with a, a small webcaster. If a webcaster really just wants to help expose people's music, there are millions of artists on MySpace who would be more than happy to, to license direct with a webcaster who has an audience who just wants to get their music out there and, and sign a gratis license with them where they wouldn't have to pay anything at all. Um, I assure you of that. It's the, the webcasters who want to play you know, Britney Spears records or uh, the new Timbaland or, or whatever it is, Timbaland doesn't need any more exposure. Um, in actual fact, many of these songs are overexposed to the point that it'll be 10 years before any one of us ever wants to hear them again. So uh, the last thing in the world we need is a bunch of amateur webcasters um, just blasting our music out there for free. The same thing with the peer-to-peer -peer networks. There's, there is obviously a difference between an individual burning a CD and or you know making a copy of a tape like Metallica used to do they encouraged tape trading um, among their fans because it, it enabled them to get more exposure and to get to the point that they are right now but there's a huge difference between one individual handing, <coughs> handing another individual a recording of an artist and one individual posting a song up on BitTorrent or eDonkey and for potentially billions of people to download um, that is a step beyond, and it, it baffles me why anybody couldn't see the difference between the two. So, um, absolutely, I, I believe that webcasters who truly want to expose artists uh, will go out and seek artists that are playing down the street here in Chicago at, at Subterranean, who 
all they want is exposure at this moment in time because they want people to come to their shows and and you know maybe at some point they can graduate up to getting a record deal and doing that all, all that kind of cool stuff but I think many of the webcasters that, that are, are, are screaming about having to pay these royalties are, are not really doing it because they want to expose new music um, they're just hobbyists who are pissed off that they're not going to be able to enjoy their hobby anymore but sorry you're using our music for your hobby and the law says that you can't do that so we're just uh, exercising the rights we have and at the end of the day we don't have ASCAP n not ASCAP or BMI or the record labels or anybody has a monopoly on music it's impossible to have a monopoly on something that anybody can just pick up a guitar and create it's not rocket science it's I mean obviously it's it's not you know the easiest thing to do either but anybody can open their mouth and sing and have all the free music in the world that they want. Well, uh, Sean, thanks very much for talking to us. Oh, my pleasure, Sean. Thank you.